I have never done a Nuzlocke. And even though I have a Ditto profile picture, I've always played Pokemon games casually, but trying to make them a challenge has never been through my mind. So after seeing a lot of creators do them, I decided why not try it out. The rules are pretty simple. You can only catch the first Pokemon of every new route, and if your Pokemon faints, it's dead. There are also some extra rules I applied to myself during this, which are on screen right now. But the biggest one for me will be nicknaming my Pokemon, because if one of them dies, I'm going to feel horrible. And to add salt to the wound, if my whole team dies, it's over. The run is done. So doing this completely blind, for my starter, we went for Ashawat, which I named Wimmy. W bro, Wimmy's always the first. He knows like, if I'm first when he starts in Oslock, I'm going to be named the starter. <laughs> and he got what he wanted. We also beat a rival, which I named Edgy, cause like come on you don't see it and so after exiting our hometown in further routes we got sam the Polin in a sea waddle which i named minecraft meteor for the names i picked them after random subscribers so you know subscribe i'm really trying to make it but anyway we managed to help some farmers find their last dog and added aqua the Asuro. Everything was going smoothly, until we reached the first gym back in our hometown. While I was getting ready for the gym fight, I made a mistake and I accidentally overleveled Sam beyond the level cap. Oh, w what happens to Forlorn now? I kinda messed up. Oh, and also Aqua. <laughs> oh my god, why do I keep doing that? Stop! So, instead of challenging the gym with a team of four, I decided to box them and rely solely on Wimmy and Minecraft Meteor. The battle against Sharon was pretty intense, and Wimmy almost met its demise since Bad Rat kept landing crits like crazy. It's crazy. I'm, I'm lucky as hell. Okay, no. Oh my no! another crit but somehow by some miracle we pulled through without any casualties there we go first patch dude that patch rat had me so nervous Wimmy was on two health come back babies come back to the team let's go <laughs> while diving more into the story we move on on our way to the second gym here i'll give you these why so why do you try to catch more i got great balls yes i do Oh my god, this music. And so we made it to Verbank City. Here, we managed to evolve Wimmy and try to get a new team member. Okay, what's the, what Pokemon are we gonna get? Are you kidding me? Oh wait, for the next gem, right? The bug type gem? Yo! I don't care if it's... No! Yeah, that's pretty bad. I could have used that pillow for this gym and the next one, but I made sure to prepare myself, and everything went as expected. We basically just steamrolled everyone, and since I had Pichaberries, berries, getting poisoned didn't do anything. Pichu berry, bro, you're not doing anything to me. Come on. That's it. So yeah, that's the second gym batch. Now, I wanted to go to the third gym, but the game kept throwing filler stuff in our face, and that wasn't nice. I slipped. We even played like hide and seek with team plasma to like bro please let me go but yeah we were free and we finally go to castella city but before going to the gym we needed to go to the sewers and this is where you can find plenty of new pokemon to catch and so we find some subats and kill them we beat team plasma enter this cave find an onyx onyx on it. And yes, we killed him. It's like I'm incapable of catching any Pokemon. But thank God for YouTube chat because I found this garden in Castilla City where we find Ronald the Carney. And yes, we didn't kill them this time. And so after some evolutions, we go forth the third gym. And Arlevani and Aqua basically just destroyed their whole team using super effective moves. Like even Aqua evolved in this fight. And this is where I started to think like, man, this is so easy. This is Pokemon Black 2. It's not like it's one of the harder games to Nuzlocke, right? Right? Now, with a third badge in hand, we moved on to the next gym, where on the way, we faced off against a mad scientist called Colres. And yes, I was throwing because Aqua almost died. What did, why did I, what did I just do? What did I just do? Oh my god. But despite Colres trying to do a vibe check on us, we managed to defeat him, go to a nearby route, and add Ronald 2.0 the Traverse to our team. We need to use whatever we can get. I wasn't too thrilled about this addition, to be honest. But luckily, in another route nearby, I found a Darumaka. Okay, Darumaka, that's good. And yes, I botched the name, but I named him Arianthos. I was 
much happier about this catch, as fire Pokemon are pretty scarce in this game for some reason. With this, we only needed to go to Nimbasa City and challenge the gym. But before doing so, I explored other routes and got a few more Pokemon, including Zelda Gamer. Also, Arianthos almost died. I'm no, it's Arianthos, don't die! Oh, it's so dead! It's so dead! No, my first death! No! Oh my god, thank god. And finally, we went to the gym and faced off against Elisa. I don't remember much about this game, but back then, this fight gave me some trauma. I knew her gym was notorious for spamming Volt Switch, so I decided to start the battle with Toxic Spikes. So after a few lucky guesses against their Sepsica... Oh my god, please. Oh my god, dude, that's so clutch. We took him down and got the badge. How come no Pokemon in my team has died? What is this? Okay, you know how karma sometimes comes and bites you back? Oh my god, stop avoiding my attacks! No! It freaking quit, he's dead! No, come on! Oh god, no, okay, first death. It was a horrible feeling, and it's definitely making me realize how soul-crushing Nuzlax can be. Okay, buddy, it was nice meeting you. Thank you for your service, Travish is released but the run was still on so i checked it off and headed towards drifel city banger after arriving to the city we helped some old team plasma grunts and so for helping them they offered me a zorua which i kind of just left him behind I, I don't know why i did that so i decided to challenge the gym right away i even spent over an hour trying to find clay in the gym but i finally tracked him down there he is okay and then we just used type advantages in our favor using water pulse and razor shell Oh, it's so easy! Epic animation of the badge going inside the case. Go! So yeah, that's the fifth badge. And then we proceeded to do a bunch of filler arcs, which, to be honest, you don't have to say this. And then we fought Team Plasma in their battleship. Then we moved on to the next route, where I found a duplicate that I couldn't use. I already have a freaking... Oh my god. And then I made my way to Charstone Cave. Okay, Joltik! Joltik for the second gym, for the sixth gym, come on. Damn it! Okay, Clink can actually learn electric type moves, so I, I'll, I'll take it, I guess. His name is Mobster, by the way. But then, strategy struck. No! What? Arianthos, no! I'll avenge you! This was the most stupid death ever. I was so bummed out. Dude, I'm so pissed. I'm like actually so pissed. And sadly, it doesn't stop there. Uh oh. No! What am I doing? <laughs> so we exit the cave in pure agony and get immasurable. And no, it didn't make me feel any better. Knowing I had to get new members, we head to Celestial Tower and get a Litwick. And yes, I used the Master Ball. So now it was time to challenge Skyla at the Mistral Gym. After getting repeatedly jaded around with wind, we challenged Skyla and basically used Mobster to beat the living hell out of her Pokemon. And that's the sixth badge. The run so far only has three deaths. At this point, I was feeling pretty cocky since only three Pokemon had died in this run. Then we took a plane to keep going through the game. And in this cave, where you walk with Bianca, I didn't expect this to happen. I mean, Bianca heals you, right? It's dead! He's dead! Oh my god! Why do you have Earth Power? No, don't attack! My last Fire-type Pokemon died, and I couldn't believe it. Now, we managed to arrive to Ondela Town. And you know, when I mentioned that I didn't remember much about this game, I was being 100% honest. The edgy fight caught me completely off guard. Without any Fire Pokemon, he managed to buff his superior way too much, and sadly, he proceeded to take down my entire team, one by one. Um, it's over. The first run was over. But I know myself. And I wasn't about to give up. And with this, I decided to do a second run. So, doing everything we did before, we managed to get to Ondela Town without any casualties. Well, except for our starter who passed away on our way to the sixth gym. Uh oh, what did I do? He's dead. Now, our starter may be gone, but I was still as motivated as ever. Are you guys ready? 
this is where I lost and this is my current team and as you can see I've got monkey with me this time and so since I knew we had to fight edgy again I did not let him buff superior at all you're gonna freaking die from this die from this please if he dies it's over and after taking Sir Peter down and then his team is here, we managed to continue on the second run with one death in our belts. But this is where things get way harder. And I really meant it when I say that, because Monkey died in this triple battle. Uh oh, Aquatel! Monkey! No! Thank you for your service, King. So, after switching Monkey for Wax, and yes, I used the Master Ball in the same way, we move on to the next route and catch an Amsol, which I named Mobster again, since I ran out of names to use. <laughs> after that, we went to Lakonusa Town, where we get more information on the story and fight some Team Plasma members. Next up, I tried to catch Cobalion, but it didn't go so well, honestly. Dude, he's going to die! What do I do? <laughs> Nothing. He died. <laughs> you know, I know there are more legendaries down the road, so no biggie, no biggie. And here, I didn't have any Pokemon to surf, so I crashed this dude's hopes and dreams in his 1000 battle. And in my opinion, this is like the most satisfying fight to win in this game. Oh, and Virision died. And after failing to catch another legendary, we arrived at Opelucid City, and before going to the gym, we caught this Poneyard in a new route. I didn't add him to the team, but we do go to the next gym. I was super worried since I didn't have any ice type moves in my Pokemon. And this gym made you choose between a rotation battle and triple battle. But somehow we managed to brush this off and get to the gym leader. Now, in the Drayden fight, I played as defensively as possible to avoid any risks. I went all in on Leech Seed and Mega Drain. After one paralysis was vibing, and the Hurricane from Fluff, the Haxorus was down for the count. And we managed to beat Dryden without losing anyone in the team. And you know how it is, after the 7th gym, it means more story time to go through. So, I'll do this. Opelousid City gets filled with ice, we beat Team Plasma and then some ninjas to after go to the 8th gym location, traverse through an underwater tube, get to Himalo City and challenge the gym. And I honestly expected to sweep this gym because Fluff was here. But I got a bit greedy and MadPat was taken down by a buff to hell jelly scent. Oh my god, what?! In the end, to take the jelly scent down, I had to stall a lot with Leech Seed and Mega Drain. But yes, that was basically the 8th gym fight. We got all the badges now. So after saying goodbye to MadPat, we go to this route and surprisingly, we finally managed to catch Terrakion. One, two, three. Thank you! And in the cave next to Terrakion, we got Squashua for our team. Piloswine? Dude, he might actually come in clutch. Then, after being lost for a few minutes, I learned that we have to go to Seaside Cave. But on the way... Who's 30? No! You're dead! Fluffy! Fucking crit! Oh my god! <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. At the end, we arrived at a seaside cave, where we got Axe, Archinamo, as an encounter. Then, after going through the cave, we find Team Plasma's ship, and you know how it goes. Kid Puzzle, fight grunts, repeat, until I beat the old dude and get kicked out. Bruh. Since we were mad as hell that we got kicked out, we just chased them down to the giant chasm to take Team Plasma down for good. We raided their ship, beat a lot of grunts and did some puzzles until we literally guessed the password. But there was an obstacle in the way, which is fighting Colress. I would say the fight did go smoothly, besides bra dying from a psychic, which I did not expect at all. Never mind, what am I doing? Like, seriously, out of all my team, the legendary Pokemon dies. But moving on, either way, goddammit, we meet Getsis. Beat up some ninjas again and walk towards one of the scariest fights of the whole game. But the scary fight wasn't curing black. We took care of that easily. The thumbnail is valid. It was Getsis. We luckily managed to take down a lot of his Pokemon by playing super tanky. And it got really, really close. Oh no, why do you have an earthquake? Don't die, vibing! Then we needed to defeat his Hydreigon, which I 100% knew could take down anyone in my team. Fortunately, Squashua managed to hit a really good Blizzard, and since I sent Danger, I switched out to Magneto. Yeah, I meant to type Magneto, by the way. Which luckily could tank all of his moves. It got to a point where it was using heals or nothing, and since I knew Hydreigon had a life orb, I decided to heal 50 HP, and Hydreigon took down himself. Okay, no casualties, yeah, we got it. I honestly couldn't believe I made it this far in my second attempt. 
but everyone knows how these games go. It was time for the hardest challenge in the entire game. And so we headed towards Victory Road, and amazingly, we got through it without any casualties. Unless... He has Earthquake! Of course, don't die! Edgy managed to take down one of my most valuable Pokemon for this run. Vibing was out. But instead of sulking over my loss, I prepared my Pokemon and entered to fight the Elite Four. I decided to start with Caitlyn, since my team had a lot of type advantages against hers. And sure enough, we managed to beat her without much trouble. <laughs> Next stop was Chantal. I was doing well up until Hun Chandelure showed up. It managed to use a Fire Blast and a Shadow Ball to take down Axe and Wax, two of my most important Pokemon for the upcoming battles against Grimsley and Marshall. I tried to salvage the run by challenging Marshall first, hoping that if I could somehow beat him, I could have at least made it to the championship, but I didn't have any good Pokemon left to counter his team. The second run was over, but I wasn't happy with myself. So I started another run. I went through the whole game again, and we had our second try in the Pokemon League. As for the team I'll be using, I got Gothic or Thiel, Sam X3, Vibin X2, nicknamed the Bisharp, because I forgot to name Bisharp for the last run, Gunfly the Flygon, and a Cobalion, which I named Copcorn. Don't ask why. So we entered the Pokemon League, and I wanted revenge for my last run. I opened up with Nickname and just used a ton of Sword Dance. And with this, we went at 12 speed and beat most of her Pokemon. But there was an exception, and her Chandelure was faster than Bisharp, which I did not expect. We luckily managed to avoid the Fire Blast, so in panic, I switched to Gunfly to avoid any hits, and the Fire Blast missed again, so we used Earthquake to end it. Next stop, we went against Marshall. I went with Goth this time, and we managed to take down plenty of his Pokemon by using a lot of psychic type moves. I also used Gunfly since he had a flying type move, and we used it to take down the Mian Xiao and his sock. Gungledur was left, so we just used Psychic twice, and we took Marshall down. Now, for Grimsley, Copcorn basically took down every single one of his Pokemon using Sacred Sword. It really wasn't difficult. And for Caitlyn, we basically used the same strategy we did back against Chantal. And just like that, we had a full team to fight the champion with. And I still was nervous as hell, but I was determined to win this time. So I went up the stairs, entered the building, and then find Iris, the Uneva champion. And it was time for the final battle. The battle started pretty badly, since I didn't switch from Goth and she took a lot of damage. So I did a quick switch with Samax 3 and killed the Hydreigon with Ice Beam, leaving him pretty damaged. Against her Lapras? Popcorn got super lucky. Oh my god! So I healed, and luckily we took it down. Now, her Dodrigon almost took down Vibin X2, but unlike Vibin 1, we had Sturdy. So we paralyzed to always go first, and Gunfly takes him down. Now, against her Archops, we simply use Sam Surf to take it down since it's a rock type. Unfortunately here, my team started to fall one by one against Iris's Agron. And here I went Copcorn, hoping it didn't have Sturdy. Please do not- PLEASE PLEASE don't have Sturdy. But luckily, it paid off. Now it was down to her last true monster, Iris Haxorus. And man, one earthquake, a nickname was out. One dual chop, and Gunfly was also down. I was getting super nervous. Copcorn was taken out since I forgot about Dragon Dance. So I decided to go for the only Pokemon in my team that could take Haxorus down, Sam X3. Haxorus used one Dragon Dance to buff himself up, but after one Ice Beam from Sam, we land a crit and managed to win. I'll be real, I honestly picked the wrong game for this. And this was probably the worst gameplay you've ever seen in an Ocelot before, but I'm looking forward to learning more. And I want to thank all the Pokemon that helped me learn everything on the way. Now, for a future Pokemon video, what should I do next? 